Hi everyone, my name is Shane Healy. I am Senior UI Developer for HMH. This is Web Components in ES6. So what are Web Components? There's specs at the moment. There's an umbrella term for four proposed W3C specs. And these include custom elements, HTML imports, templates, and shadow DOM. If you haven't looked into this, these things probably won't mean a whole lot to you. But bundled together, what it means is you can create or extend new types of HTML or DOM elements, like your button or your div or your your paragraph tag. So they'll look like this. You've got my element, or you can extend an already existing one like a button and turn it into a custom button. And that custom button could do something like an additional action, or it's styled in a particular way for, your, for you and your application. This sounds familiar. Uh, if it does, it's because AngularJS does this. I've grabbed some code from 1.5 beta. So basically what they've done is they've put a wrapper around directives and they've called it a component and set a few defaults and it looks a lot like web components. And I think in Angular 2 they're calling them web components and that's going to confuse things even more. And I'm told React.js does something very similar as well. So if you're used to building out these custom elements, this will be familiar enough. So how do we do it? Uh, we register a new HTML element. My color coding is gone here, so bear with me. Document.registerElement function. Okay, and that's it. What we put in there is the tag name as the first argument, and we put in an options object as the second argument. So on the next line down, you can see my custom thing is document.registerElement, the name of the tag, and the behavior it's going to have. The important thing to note here is that the behavior object extends this interface, this HTML element interface, which is a web API that it are, is in most browsers, not all browsers. So now you can use your custom thing wherever you want in the document. Note, we haven't imported a framework here. There's no Angular. There's nothing else in your script tags. This is all done in the browser, and it's all done natively in JavaScript. OK, so that brings us to ES6. And we want to extend classes. So if you remember back to when you first learned classes, we all built animals or cars or libraries. So we have an animal that's a type of class. We have a class animal that's kind of like our base class. We can build it and we have this default speak thing that it does and then we can create a dog and it speaks differently. So HTML element in web components is the same concept. So this is some ES6 code on the right hand side here. This class has four callbacks, and these are part of the HTML element standard. So we can, you can probably read off the screen there, fires when an instance of the element is created, uh, fires when an instance is inserted into the document, fires when an attribute is changed, removed, or updated, and another one that fires when it's removed. And you can see down the bottom there, we've got our document at register element thing again. Okay, so do we have a demo? Oh wait, no, there's one more. The template. This is just to put it all together so you've actually got some HTML to play with. So we're going to create a template. Uh, we put some CSS in the style and we can cr put some uh, HTML in our container. The <coughs> amount of HTML and how this all fits together is up to you and what you want your component to do depending on how complex or how uh, simple it is. The diagram at the bottom right, Chrome is our sweet spot between things that implement ES6 and things that implement web components. There's a lot of changes happening at the moment around web components and a lot of browsers and are uh, sitting back and waiting to see what happens next before they start implementing all this stuff. But Chrome is doing it right away. Okay, can we see that code? Hopefully. So, let's get into the body first. There's our widget, there's our date widget. It's just a HTML element, but it's a custom one. All the code for this is actually in the head. Now this is all in line, it doesn't have to be. This could just be imported. So, the first step is our style information, okay? Just again, just some HTML or just some CSS for styling this thing. Uh, 
here then, inside this div, this uh, div here with a class of container, we have just some basic HTML, just some divs uh, that we can use then to, to reference these and put some information in them. And then we get into the meat of it. So you notice there's no transpilers, there's no tracer or Babel here. This is all just running natively. Uh, so you've got a class state widget which extends the HTML element that I referred to before. We're only going to use the created callback because we just want to put this thing on the page. Uh, we query the elements that we're going to use and then we draw it, which is a small little function down here which just grabs the date and populates these elements. And then we set an interval of one second to update it every second. We don't use the attached or attribute or anything like that. And then at the very end, we register the element and put our, uh, our information in there. And that's it. <laughs>